Smiley piercings, pros and cons by a piercer. Coming up in episode number 30. So stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So, uh, when I go through these, I'm talking to you as someone who has a lot of experience with piercings and etc. First off, uh, today's subject came from one of our viewers. They asked if I could do one of these on smiley piercings. And I need to start off with a disclaimer. I don't do them. I don't like them. I think they're a bad idea. And I will refuse to do them if you come into my studio. I'm going to get into all that later when we get into the cons. Um, but for those who don't know what a smiley piercing is, it is a piercing on this area up inside your mouth. Isn't that a beautiful view? Um, there's a tendon right there called the florium, which I'm probably mispronouncing. Um, the piercing is done directly behind it. Unlike a frowny, which is on the bottom, or tongue webbing, it's basically the same piercing in different locations, but it's on the top. Now, uh, that all said, let's get into the con or the pros of this, the advantages. I'm going to give you five of each, and then I'll try to talk a little bit about what I would say to you if you came into my studio and asked to get this piercing. Number one, let's get into the, the pros, the advantages, or the supposed advantages of getting a smiley piercing. The first one being is that because it's in your mouth, you generate tissue very rapidly inside your mouth, like all oral piercings, it usually heals out fairly rapidly, anywhere by comparison to other piercings. You're looking at something that's gonna take anywhere from a couple of weeks to about a month to go through that first stage of healing. Second one, um, this piercing has been around for quite a while. I think uh, the first time I saw it was probably the late 90s, somewhere around in there. Um, it does have a history of healing fairly well. It's not really extreme or experimental. Um, it can heal is basically what I'm getting at. Number three. This is an unusual piercing. This is not a piercing that you're going to see a lot in the wild. It is not a common piercing. In fact, it tends to go through these stages of six months, everybody and their brother wants one, and then you don't hear about them for years. You may have the impression, because you have seen lots of photos of this particular piercing, um, that it is really common. However, this has more to do with people sharing photos of other people having the piercing. They're usually right after they're done. Um, you don't see a lot of people walking around and going, yeah, I've had my smiley pierce for 15, 16, 20 years, like you do with other piercings, like all the other piercings that I do. Number four, this piercing to a degree can be hidden um, because of where it's located at, unless you're smiling a lot, moving your upper lip, People are not going to notice that you have it pierced. You could even go as far as putting a straight barbell in it, and then they're not going to see it at all. Number five, this piercing is not going to affect uh, eating and talking as much as, say, a tongue piercing would. However, uh, you do need to cut back on certain substances until you get past the swelling period. Now, let's get into the cons, the disadvantages. Um, and these are easier than, uh, let me tell you, I had problems coming up with pros on this one. Uh, number one, it causes damage to, or can cause damage to gums, teeth, and the bone structure of your mouth. Think about it. One of the first things that everybody notices when they see you is either your eyes or your front teeth. If you have a metal object constantly in contact with your front teeth, it is going to do damage to your front teeth. Also, generally, they tend to hang right on the gum line, so it can cause your gums to recede. Something else that people will notice right off the bat. So, if you want messed up front teeth and you want your gums to recede, this is the piercing for you. 
Number two, it is prone to rejection. This piercing is known to grow out of the body, um, sometimes right through that tendon, and it is not a pretty sight once it does that. It's not a noticeable scar because most people don't look inside your mouth. It's not like, you know, an eyebrow piercings where everybody's going to notice it, but this piercing does tend to reject. Number three, even after this piercing has healed, you are going to be more acceptable to STDs during oral sex. So if you switch partners, you need to practice safe sex every single time. Number four, this piercing swells. Um, during the healing process, of course, it's going to swell, but I've had encountered numerous times where somebody had this particular piercing for a couple of years, everything seemed fine and dandy, and then out of the blue, they either ate something spicy or something got caught in the piercing or what have you, and it agitated and it began to swell massively to the point where it was difficult to get the jewelry out at all. So keep in mind, this is piercing, and, and I don't know, possibly it could be that it just migrates to a point where it comes in contact with that tendon and just the natural movement of your mouth starts to agitate it and then it starts to swell and then you have that perfect storm where it just keeps swelling more and more and more. Uh, let me tell you, taking uh, this particular piece of jewelry out of a swelled up piercing, not a comfortable experience from what I've gathered. Uh, especially when you have somebody who put a barbell in there and whoever the piercer was decided that'd be a good idea to tighten that thing on as tight as possible and then bend the post, compress it, so that it was impossible for the balls to come off. Number five, this piercing will close pretty rapidly. Anything in your mouth, any uh, anytime you pierce any part of your mouth, it will close in some cases a matter of a couple of hours, if not minutes. This is a piercing that once you put that jewelry in there, you are gonna wanna leave it in. So let's get into the consultation. Uh, usually uh, kind of an idea of what I would say to you if you came into my piercing studio and you asked me to do this piercing, what I would tell you. First thing I'd tell you is uh, it's not a good idea. The second thing I'd tell you is it's not a good idea. The third thing I would tell you is no, I'm not going to do it. And here's, and then the fourth thing I would do is tell you why. Kind of a refresher of what we've already talked about. Um, I'm going to tell you that it's in, it has a high risk of doing damage to teeth, gums, in bones, in the bone structure of your mouth. I'm going to tell you that it's prone to rejection. I'm going to tell you that it's prone to migration. I'm going to tell you that it's prone to swelling even after it heals. And I'm going to tell you that it isn't really a great idea. Um, I have yet to see anybody that has worn this piercing for more than a couple years without issues. Um, if you were going to get it done, what I would suggest for aftercare is very similar to what I would suggest to a tongue for a tongue piercing. And that would involve doing warm salt water rinses of warm water and sea salt twice daily for a couple minutes for at least the first two weeks to a month. Also, rinsing uh, roughly three to four times a day with biotin antiseptic mouthwash. Um, swelling is a factor with any oral piercing, so I'm going to suggest that you cut down your intake of tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, hot and spicy foods, things that are extremely warm in temperature, or anything that may agitate your mouth, especially acid-based foods like tomato sauce, etc. Also, I'm going to tell you to stay away from salty foods or salty beverages, sports drinks, etc., um, it's a good idea to eat lots of cold items in some simplistic foods at first. Even though it's not going to um, interrupt eating and talking as much as a tongue piercing well, there is movement and constant rubbing with that piercing. So the more you move, the more you talk, the more complicated the food is that you eat, the more likely you are to see more swelling. Um, Cross-contamination prevention, common sense things, wash your hands before you handle it, no oral contact, deep mouth kissing, sexual contact. For a minimum of eight weeks, you are more acceptable to STDs during all sex. So if you switch partners, practice safe sex the way you're supposed to. Um, also, uh, avoid sticking unclean ob objects in your mouth. Pin caps, toothpicks, dirty fingers, etc. Make sure that all of your utensils are cleaned on a regular basis. In fact, I would suggest starting with a fresh toothbrush. 
If you uh, also do not share food, I food items with other people, make sure that you're only using your own and uh, uh, don't eat off other people's plates. It's kind of disgusting when you really start thinking about it. And at least use a clean fork. Um, other than that, the other thing I would advise you is anytime you start to see any type of erosion, any type of uh, inflame, if the area becomes inflamed or, or what have you, that you immediately remove the jewelry. Your body will give off signs. And this is one of those piercings that I would suggest monitoring on a regular basis and kind of checking around it. Um, that it is starting to uh, cause damage to teeth and gums and it should be moved, removed immediately. If you start to see any swelling or discomfort many, let's say a year or so into the piercing, I would suggest removing it immediately because it's probably a sign that the rejection is starting or that something's gotten in there or it's getting to that point where it's going to start inflaming for no apparent reason. Well, I think that pretty much covers the majority of what I would tell you. Um, as always, I hope you found this peer, uh, this video uh, educational. That's the whole point of this. Um, strongly, strongly suggest that if you are considering getting this piercing done, that you visit your, your local piercer, somebody with a good reputation, somebody with a lot of experience, and talk to them about the things that I brought up today. They may have a different take on it. They may have a different idea on it. But if they don't even volunteer to bring up the risks involved with this particular piercing, you should go somewhere else because what they're doing is they're experimenting on you. Or they're just interested in that coin that's in your purse or wallet, pocket, or credit card, I guess. Anyway, um... It's really one of those piercings that I would highly suggest that you ask for photographic proof that they've done numerous, numerous, as in more than one, and photos of piercings that have actually healed. Not photos of piercings that were done, that were that the photo was taken five minutes after it was done. Everything looks great five minutes afterwards. Might look a little, little inflamed, a little gory, but the reality is, is it's not a healed piercing. In that process is really what you're concerned about and is what they should be showing off in their work. Other than that, um, if you have any questions, if this brought up something or you have a suggestion or you've had this piercing, um, especially if you've had it longer than a couple of years, I'd be interested to hear what your experience has been like. Please leave a comment. Um, I usually answer them if I have time. Uh, the whole goal Part of the goal of this whole channel is to kind of build a area where people can communicate freely and dispel some of the some of the misinformation that is on the internet. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of these, please subscribe. We post roughly four to five videos a week on body piercing and tattooing. We are continually to grow and introduce new series as they come about. Um, if you want to be in the know and know when we post these, hit that notification bell. Also, if you'd like to check out our merch um, store, click on the icon thing or uh, in the description. There's plenty of t-shirts and plenty of designs there and various different items that you can get to help support us. And also look stylish and uh, show off your pride in having body modifications. Till next time. Um, I hope all your piercings heal with ease and without issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody.